What's up everybody? Happy April Fool's Day. No April Fool's jokes today. I did say that I was going to move all of our stuff over to our Jim Jess Baker, fb.com slash the Jim Jess Baker page today. But as I'm driving, I opened up the pages app and can't easily find the way to shoot a Facebook Live from my page. So that's why I'm still doing it here. Uh, I will, though, be posting them over there as soon as I figure out, while not driving, how to post a live video over there. I will be doing that. So let me know, comment, let me know your best prank that you've had ever in the history of your life on an April Fool's. If there's been a good one, I'd love to hear that. Uh, yeah, today I want to talk a little bit about rejection. I've been thinking about rejection and how we need to separate our ideas from ourselves. A lot of times if you present an idea, if you're a leader, that's part of your job is to be setting the, steering the ship, which means you're going to be introducing a lot of new ideas. And a lot of times you'll have a lot more context about those ideas. And so as you're casting vision for these new ideas, you need to be communicating those those whys really well. And that's something that I've noticed that I haven't done. I'll implement a new idea somewhere, something, or I'll just, I, my mind is usually pretty busy and I'm always thinking. So I've thought it through a lot in my mind. So then when I present the idea, I just expect everybody else to get it. And usually they don't because people require <laughs> communication and a lot of communication at that. And so the ideas that I present sometimes get rejected. And then I think, or I associate that with a rejection of me, and then I'll kind of shrink back and isolate and unhealthy things like that. So that's just a lesson I'm learning. One, when I introduce a new idea, I need to make sure that I'm really casting vision for it and casting vision a lot, a lot more than I think I need to be. I need to be talking about that idea a lot more before implementing that idea just to give people time. I don't like when people spring things on me either. So if you're going to change something, you need to be giving people lots of time and understanding to mull that idea over and not just abruptly change things on them. And so probably when I think an idea is ready to be changed, probably need to set like a few week, probably few month course of, all right, well, now I need to start communicating about this thing before I start implementing anything. So, and then if somebody still, after you've done that communication and are really explaining the why and hearing what other people are thinking as you're dealing with that idea in idea stage and in communication stage, um, if they still reject that idea once it's been implemented, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a rejection of you. It's just a rejection of your idea. And I realized that I'm a, a people pleaser. I want everyone to be happy and that's impossible because everyone has a different preference. And so when I'm running up against anything, any, any changes, I want people to be happy with my idea. And that's just not what leaders or leadership does. And so these are the lessons I'm learning right now about leadership and about myself. It's good to know that I really want everyone to like my ideas and to be happy about them and to be as excited about them as I am. But the reality is, is that people don't really like to change. I don't really like to change. I don't like when change is forced upon me, especially if change is comfortable because change is never comfortable or yeah, you know what I meant? Like if, if we're comfortable now, why do we need to change anything? So I was listening to a teaching today and it was just talking about things aren't hard they're just new I think that's a really good distinction right where we if we're in something new and things are changing we it's 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 different it's new and so it's a challenge but instead of telling ourselves things are hard we should just probably go ahead and say this is new and it's a challenge and it's a good challenge so yeah that's something that I really want to grow and I want to grow in the ability to separate my ideas from myself. If someone rejects my idea, that doesn't mean they are rejecting me. And if they are rejecting my idea, I probably just haven't done a good, a jo good enough job of giving enough time and leeway in describing that thing. And I haven't cast enough vision as to the why. Also, maybe I need to be not so quickly shy away from no's or resistance. If I get a no or I get pushback or feedback on it, 
my thing is just like, well, there's a little bit of static. I don't want to deal with this. So we're just going to, we're going to give the people what they want or whatever. And I think I need to be more persuasive. And if I really believe in something, take the long course. Is this a hill I'm willing to die on? And if it is, then it requires more planning probably than I put into it. And if you're getting that resistance and it does really matter, then maybe I need to strive harder to, instead of retreating and feeling rejected, going ahead and advancing lovingly, gently, and further explaining the why. And I think a good question about that is, hey, what are, what are some fears that you're having about this? Or, you know, or just anticipating some of those fears or apprehensions and going ahead and addressing those up front as you're casting vision as well. So these are things that I am learning. Communication is super important. I'm realizing that I need to communicate a lot more than I am currently. So I recently talked to a friend that we haven't talked to for a while and they asked, hey, what are you doing in, in Hawaii? Are you just on like permanent vacation? And I mean, I thought I had upped my communication talking about what we're doing. I mean, my day today, I got up at 4 a.m. and I have been working since. And I think I just need to do a better job of communicating. Uh, I think we're even going to shoot a day in the life of video to show people what we do all day because I really wish that I was on a beach right now with a fruity drink with an umbrella. That would be amazing. So no, we are not just living in a permanent vacation, even though we are in Hawaii and I need to do a better job of communicating in other venues, uh, besides Facebook, daily Facebook lives, explaining what we're doing, because obviously not everyone is hearing what we're communicating. And so I need to really continue to up my communication in all forms. Some people just don't connect with the video and I probably just need to be hitting that text game as well make sure that I'm typing out some thoughts as often as I'm shooting videos too so but because that person didn't know what I was doing that's not a rejection of me and I think sometimes people say things I tweeted something recently that just said I wonder if what percentage of the dumb things we say are based in insecurity or fear so maybe people say ask questions like that not thinking about the ramifications of how that would be received, because I don't. I don't think the majority of people think about how their words and their tone are received. Maybe maybe they do. And I think maybe sometimes people's insecurities come through as well when they make statements or ask questions like that. So give me some feedback on what y'all think of that. And yeah, if you're facing resistance today, if you're facing rejection today, uh, try to go ahead and separate rejection of your ideas from rejection of who you are. And the good news is that if you're in Christ Jesus, God does not reject you. So there it is. Monica, what's up? How are you? How is outreach? Where are you? Uh, I think Brian also said he was on here. Brian Ensminger. Got some people watching today. Thanks for watching, everybody. It is 2 p.m. here in Honolulu. I'm headed back from a Costco run. Going to fill up the fridge and freezer with some things. It's 80 degrees. Got the AC on and living the dream. So we're going to be pushing this stuff over to fb.com slash the Jim Jess Baker, all of our Facebook lives and most of our content. So I'm not blowing up my personal page. If I feel like something is super worth sharing, I'll post it to our personal page, but we would love it if you would like our Facebook page, fb.com slash the Jim Jess Baker, the Jim Jess Baker, T-H-E-J-I-M-J-E-S-S-B-A-K-E-R, the Jim Jess Baker. Yeah, we got 100 likes over there, so thank you to everyone who has liked our Facebook page. Please go ahead and like that if you want to see more content from us. I was going to post there today. That's what I said I was going to start doing in April, but because I'm driving, I pulled up the Facebook Pages app and could not figure out how to do that. So instead of fumbling with that while I was driving, I'm just posting here and tomorrow, and I'll take some time when I park to figure out how to do that.
do that. So, all right, guys, thank you for watching. Hope everyone is doing well. Comment, let me know what your best April Fool's prank that you've either pulled or have been pulled upon has ever been in your life. The best April Fool's prank. I don't got nothing for you. I'm not much of a prankster. So anyway, have a great day.